Hey guys, my name is Ronald Solinto. I'm a registered nurse and also a family nurse practitioner. Welcome to my channel, Nurse Track 101, where nursing concepts are made easy just for you. Well, let's get started. Come on, guys. Hello, guys. Um, welcome back to Nurse Track 101, and this is your host, Ronald Solinto. And today we're going to talk about the difference between diabetic ketoacidosis and HHS or hyperosmolar hyperglycemic state. I'm going to make this as simple as possible. I know it's a complicated subject, but I would like to make this as, as, as simple but as detailed also as possible. Let's start with the diabetic ketoacidosis. So this is a DKA. This is a diabetic ketoacidosis. Diabetic ketoacidosis is uh, usually occurs in type 1 diabetes because there's a lack or loss of insulin activity. So um, what you have is, for example, loss of insulin activity. You don't have any insulin. So what happens is that, of course, the, there's going to be a rise in uh, glucose in blood. And also, since the cells, since uh, the cells of our body do not get any glucose, the liver will start producing will start uh, producing glucose. So there's an increased um, hepatic glucose output. So what happens if you have too much solute in your blood in your plasma? In term, uh, there's going to be a lot of glucose compared to the solvent, which is water. So if you have too much glucose, and you're going to have increased osmolality in your uh, in your plasma in your bloodstream. So you're going to have increased osmolality. So increased concentration of solute of solute. In, in this case, is glucose because you have high concentration of sugar and less concentration of water, the initial body response for this is to uh, shift water, shift water from intracellular to extracellular. So body, the body will shift water from the cells to the bloodstream, to the, to the vascular system. And then you're gonna have also you're gonna feel thirsty because the body is gonna is gonna stimulate the thirst center in the brain that so you can drink more water so inc increase water intake. That's initially what happened, but as this progresses, there's more glucose in your in your blood. For example, as you know from the previous uh, lecture, one of the signs and symptoms of of severe hyperglycemia is polyuria. Uh, there's an increase in excretion of urine. Also, you have some nausea, vomiting. This, this responses cannot keep up with the body, with the fluid loss. So this responses cannot keep up with the fluid loss. And the result for this one is you will have more increase in the, in the concentration of sugar in your body. So the body becomes severely, severely hyper osmolar or hyperosmolality and or hypovolemia so you less fluid volemia less fluid in the vascular systems this in turn you will have because there's less perfusion less water in your bloodstream you will have decrease renal perfusion so there's less blood less perfusion in the kidney. And as you know, if you have less perfusion in the kidney, there's going to be a less excretion of glucose in the urine. So there's going to be a less excretion of glucose in urine. This will actually make more, as you see, it will make it will cause more hyper hypovolemia. You will have more 
sugar in the in the bloodstream because there's a decreased excretion of glucose in the urine at the same time you also have what is called osmotic diuresis so there's going to be a lot of even even there's a less excretion of glucose in the urine and it contributes to the hyperosmolality of the blood there's because there's too much sugar in the in the bloodstream there's some the glucose is still going to leak it's still going to leak in the urine so that's why you have osmotic di diuresis as a result the potassium and sodium will be lost as well in the urine so you have a uh, low potassium and low sodium so go back here you go back here since there is no uh, insulin activity so the body cannot source um, sugar as um, even though there's a lot of sugar the body cannot source sugar as energy the body will start do lipolysis the body's going to start breaking down fatty acid in the liver as an en as energy source so fatty acid is broken down so fatty acid is broken down and byproduct of that the byproduct of that is ketones there are two major ketones which is acetoacetate and also beta hydroxy butyrate these are organic acids these are acidic it will drive the pH of the blood down as you see as the pH of blood goes down you will have a few symptoms you will have tachypnea you will also have you can see a fruity breath so you can smell somebody with ketoacidosis diabetic ketoacidosis they have some fruity fruity uh, breath you can also uh, it's also acute uh, small breathing where you have severe labor breathing here and as you see that you have a lot of um, acidity in the blood and so there's a lot of H plus in the blood since uh, inside the um, since the the bloodstream has very low potassium the body tries to compensate by getting the potassium from inside the cell from intercellular from inside the cells to outside the cells and the H plus which is the um, acid will go into the cells so from from the vascular system into the cell to intracellular so to compensate for the low potassium and this is what happens here the reason why patients uh, with DKA have uh, coma it's because majority of the time or most of the time it's contributed mostly by the hyperosmolality or hypovolemia of the blood and in this case uh, the patient will have because there's no perfusion so there's no perfusion in the in the brain because of hypotension and there's no perfusion in the brain decreased perfusion in the brain you have of course dehydration and a decreased tissue tissue perfusion patient with this one can have 10% uh, can have coma uh, with DKA they have too small breathing hypotension uh, less perfusion in the brain and can lead to it's it is very very critical that this patient gets help right away the difference between this one DKA they're all actually an uh, DKA and HHS which is hyper or smaller hyperglycemic state they are pretty similar except that in HHS there is no lipolysis so if this one is HHS there's no love there's a little bit 
insulin left. Just a little bit of insulin left uh, in the body, in, in our system, can suppress the lipolysis. So this one is not going to happen. There's not going to be some acidosis um, happening in somebody, in patients with hyperosmolar hypoglycemic state. Only this part, hyperosmolality and hypovolemia, um, that is happening. So let's make a um, comparison between them here. So everything else in HHS is the same uh, as in DKA, except there's no lipolysis. So if you go, for example, if I make a this is a uh, DKA and this is a um, this is HHS. Since uh, DKA is usually ha it usually happens in somebody with type one type 1 diabetes mellitus. It can happen in type 2 with some patients who experience infection, infection, trauma, and um, that can lead to loss of insulin activity. This can happen. But usually it happens in somebody with type 1 diabetes. But in the in meanwhile, in uh, a in HHS, somebody with HHS, usually type 2 patient, type 2 diabetes patient. Like I said before, this is a loss of insulin activity. And this one, there's still little insulin left. So it will, little insulin suppress suppress the acidosis. The third one, this one will have lipolysis. This is the breaking down of fatty acid and the byproduct of this is ketones, uh, the ketone bodies and can lead to acidosis. This is no lipolysis. Somebody with, with type 1 diabetes, for example, the blood sugar even um, uh, over 250 milligram per deciliter, this can happen. Somebody who has no insulin at all, no insulin activity, even with uh, more than 250 milligrams of deciliter of blood sugar can lead to um, DKA. Meanwhile, um, Somebody with HHS, sometimes they can come with um, blood sugar of even 800 to 2400. In DKA, the potassium loss is more severe. It's more severe. And this one, the potassium loss is less severe. DKA, it's actually less or lower, I would say, lower mortality. And this one is, has higher mortality in HHS. It's actually 10 times mortality than DKA because this usually happens in uh, elderly patients with um, debilitating illness with um, a, lot of, a lot of comorbidities. So yeah, that's those are those are the explanation my lecture on um, DKA versus HHS. All right, guys, I'll see you till the next video. Take care. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoy the video, and I also hope that this video will help you in your studies to pursue a career in nursing. If you guys have a request about any other topics, leave a comment below. If you guys like, share or subscribe to my channel, it will help me tremendously to make more of these videos. See you guys next time. Bye.